Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is a fun one today, for sure. I haven't seen this one before. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a post drill that broke off inside the tooth. You can see pretty straight, a um, little bit of a ledge that was created there. But how did this happen? Well, we'll get into that. So this is how it presented to me and took the temp off after we got her nice and numb. We'll show you how we take care of that. So <clears throat> first things first, we got to get back inside there. Use the work horse bore. Ooh, that wasn't even close to, to correct. <laughs> Um, I just had uh, lunch, and so that was not the best idea to record right after lunch. Anyway, what's going on here, uh, just access them back in, and they put a little piece of cotton on top of there. Um, was a little bit difficult to remove. I, the crown was, I believe, already fabricated, so I try to keep things as small as possible. However, I do have to get that post out of there, the post drill out of there, and a few other things you'll see in a second. Um, so it took a, I need to make a slightly larger hole than I would normally do in this case. It was all composite. I still repaired it, but I try to keep, especially if I know that the crown is already fabricated. And the patient did say that. I believe that was the case. I want to get that out of there. So at this point, you can see it's kind of a mess of post drill and gutta percha and what the hell happened. So you can see the three tines as, as far as the blades of the drill, and it just kind of got bound up inside there. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can even get this thing loose. Um, I like using this little E2D burr. I use it at about 75% power, and I'm just doing it dry here so I can visually see is it mobile. So the good news is this thing is pretty loose inside here, and I expected this was going to be the case. Um, I don't know if it was overstressed, if it was fatigued, if it had been used too much, but it somehow broke off inside there. Um, spoiler alert, there is actually a thermophil carrier in here too, so I think what happened is the post drill was binding up, got the grab the thermophil carrier and that's what snapped it off if you're doing these highly recommend that you use um, a heated instrument to kind of remove the bulk of the gutta percha that way the post drill doesn't have to do as much or just use the heated instrument to remove it as well what i'm doing here is i know that i have those three spots around there and so i'm taking an f1 and trying to remove as much gutta percha unfortunately you'll see here in a second we snap off the f1 as well so now we got three things to remove from a tooth <clears throat> this was a fun day just great at this point, trying to loosen it back up because now that there's a piece of the F1 inside there as well, it's locked in place. <laughs> so this is real fun. Um, loosening it up, and you can see I'm starting to get the movement again, so I'm not worried about it. I'm also not worried about the F1. It, it's pretty much encapsulated and got a percha. Once we get that out, it'll be fine. However, at this point, I realize I need to make a slightly larger access. So widening it out here with the workhorse burr, I can say it that time, but not the first time. Go, Scott. Um, <laughs> just to kind of gain some more space inside there and come back in now. And you can see we start to get some good movement here. I really like to use ultrasonics for any removal of things like this. I know there are people who have can use tube and glue, who can braid, get around it. What I'd recommend is don't think that there's just one way to do it. <clears throat> Try them all. I've tried all of those. In my hands, this tends to work the best. And you'll see it come out here in just a minute. But we're getting pretty darn close as far as removing it. Um, starting to get some movement on there. And the problem with a lot of these is, especially with files, is if your access has a curve to it, you don't have straight line access, it's sometimes more difficult to remove. But if I were to do straight line access here, I would be in a lot of trouble because I'd remove too much tooth structure. So what I did here is sometimes getting in with a carbide and spinning it around can actually kind of snap it loose a little bit and it's definitely starting to get a little bit of mobility here the other thing you can do if you have a large let's say post or in this case a you know, post drill you can actually make the post smaller drill around the outside if it's not moving and that way you don't have to remove it quite as much and you can see i'm getting a fair amount of movement on it i was surprised usually with these i have to back them out but you'll notice in this case i actually was spinning it almost as though it was engaging in a clockwise direction and it popped up very readily so don't hesitate to try moving in an opposite direction sometimes they work better in there and that's what it looks like. You can see the two pieces of the post drill. Um, patient wanted it, so I gave it to her in a little sterile bag. <laughs> kind of fun. Anyway, now we have to go after everything else. So what I'm going to do here is come in with the alpha and start the traditional retreat. I'm not even worried about the F1 file. It's going to be probably along the side of that little path that the post drill made anyway and get that out. This is where that heated tip makes a big difference because you'll see here in a second, this is where I'm trying to get the F1 out. And instead, what I grab here is part of, actually, sorry, the F1 does come out first. So there's the F1 popped out super fast, not worried about that whatsoever. And I was, you know, I was definitely... F1 versus post drill. The post drill is going to win most times, but I needed to create a little bit of space here. I wanted to make sure we still didn't have anything inside there, and I wasn't sure what was left. And what do you know? It is a thermophil carrier. <laughs> so at this point, that's three things we have pulled out of this tooth. And, and at this point, I'm just impressed. 
It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> that we got this much inside there. <laughs> it's, it's just impressive. So what we're doing now, new F1, spinning that at 500 to help kind of melt gutta percha, loosen everything up. You can see deep down inside there, we have a little kind of piece right at the apex we need to pop out. So I'm going to use a 35 here just to kind of loosen it. We're pretty darn close to being patent. And you can see I dropped down there. Uh, estimated was 21 on the comb beam. So we're, we're down at like 20, trying to just pull everything out here. And I knew this was a, it was an interesting case because it kind of had a big flare and then the tip was actually pretty skinny. So that's why I just chose to do the 35 here. Um, but I was able to get a decent amount of chunks out. You can see that that's kind of what we're pulling out. I, I've skipped over a lot of the rinsing and everything. I do I did put the total time for treatment in here too. But I did want to show with working length kind of how I'm using a, a, the screwing in motion to get a very accurate um, working length here. I will be using a cone for this case because the size was a little bit larger. Uh, the other thing is the squirt fill kind of needs to have, um, you can't just squirt into a wide open area because it doesn't direct it at all. And because the post drill was so large, it really isn't a great situation to try to do a squirt fill for this sort of technique. Um, so here we are finishing it up with the final rinse with the butt rest of the Triton. <clears throat> really a straightforward case. You're asking probably why did I retreat this? Well, the number one though, they asked me to at this point. They said, just go ahead and retreat it since you're gonna be inside there. Patient was asymptomatic, but with how much work had been done inside there, especially once I saw that it was thermophil, I wanna make sure she has a good foundation on which to build the new tooth. I still had a little bit of got a percha at the apex here. So went a little bit larger with a 50 headstrom, just helped to remove that. And you'll see here in a second, we got pretty much all of it out, not worried about this at all. And the motion I'm doing there is also trying to smooth off a little bit of that step that was created by the post drill. What I used here is a just stock 08 cone, used a taper plate, cut it to 35, and it dropped down just beautifully. So the um, this is gonna be the warm vertical technique. And I, I did use the smaller tip here, but you'll see I'm doing a brushing technique. So instead of just going straight apical, if you have a larger size like this, what I recommend is go down to about where you'd wanna put your post and then move laterally. That almost cuts off the gutta percha almost and gets it ready to go. X-ray looks great at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and seal up the tooth here. I am actually, as I'm recording this, they are working on my <laughs> cart right now because my water was not working. So it means that the BioClear one is not not very effective without the water. So I'm just using my Danville one. Um, as you can see, it is a bit of a mess inside there, but it does do a really nice job getting everything clean. And that's kind of what we're looking at. So we're gonna build the tooth up now. What I did here is I did use a larger post. So that blue is a 90, um, 9004 from Brassler. I want to have that strength there because there's not a ton of tooth structure left here. Uh, I'm not sure which order where I'm dropping these, but I'll talk about that prognosis. Anterior teeth, especially laterals, you can hide from the occlusion and get away with straight up murder of <laughs> good and, you know, yeah. So I did use Luxacore here. I'm using a brown tube. Unfortunately, it kind of got caught right there. There is a void in the final image that makes me very upset and sad. And I think that's where that void came in. You want to be able to pull out all at once. I should have backed out just a little bit more when I put the uh, Centrix tube in initially because it bound and then I think when I pulled out on it <clears throat> that's what created the void. I tried to go back to the exact same area but at that point you kind of have created that space and there's not too much you can do. I'm not going to go inside there and clean it all out for a void just because it makes the x-ray look you know ugly but a little disappointed that that's kind of how this one happened. So should have done a slightly better job at the beginning but I think the case is going to be totally fine here. And what I'm doing is trying to shape as much as possible. This is a case where you might be asking well why didn't you use like an opaque so you could tell the difference of where it was. And it's because I'm not sure what material they're going to use. And if it's anything that's translucent, the opaque Luxacore is too opaque. It, it's, it will mess up the color because remember they are translucent, um, either translucent zirconia or Emax lithium disilicate, and that will shine through and will kind of mess up the prep. So I like to use something a little more Denton shade color, hence the, A, the A3. What I'm doing here though is prepping dry because I can see better where my composite is and where the actual margins are gonna be. One thing you can do here, you'll notice I did almost a split dam technique. I was worried with how little tooth structure was left, especially because the gingiva was very healthy and I'm not going to be needing to manipulate it at all. If I had put a nine or a butterfly clamp on this, I was worried it kind of would pop off. This also gives me 
the ability to go in and test fit the crown. And that's what we're doing here. You can see me zooming in and I'm making sure that the margin is fully seated and that there's not anything. So you can see the little bounce there. So what I ended up doing, those sharp line angles, I didn't notice until we zoomed in, they were stopping the crown from seating completely. And so after that, just smooth everything off. Remember, for most crowns these days, they're not like the old school PFMs. You want things to be nice and rounded, especially if you're scanning, because those right angles are really tough for them. So if you're doing the restorative for your general dentist, try to round everything off as much as possible. That's what it looks like when we're all said and done. So you can barely even tell we did anything. There's the void that I just I'm not super happy with. The rest of the case I'm pleased with. And, you know, she went over and got it. But just love it. You know, we got to. <laughs> you got a post drill, you have a F1, that obviously was my fault, and then also having a, you know, thermofill carrier. So this was a fun, I've never pulled three things, I've actually pulled out more things than a tooth, but never one single tooth. Anyway, there's your time for everything, about 26 minutes for the whole case, which wasn't too bad. I was able to get the files out in about five minutes, give or take. The rest of the root canal took a little bit of time. And whenever you have to test fit gut approach, it takes a little bit longer. The restored it pretty, it was pretty simple as well. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I thought that was kind of a fun, different video of what the heck is inside this tooth. <laughs> so if you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment below. I'll like and subscribe to all that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you all next time.